Hello, everybody. I'm Happy Caldwell, and thank you for joining me for today's edition of Arkansas Alive. We'll get into Arkansas Alive topic, the power of the tongue, in just a minute. Let me remind you that on Friday, uh, I'm going to answer some questions about the end time wealth transfer. Uh, I want you to see what the scripture says. I know what men have said, but there's, there's validity to this, but not the way it's been taught or thought. So I'm going to answer those questions on Friday and give you some scripture. So be sure and join me uh, for Friday. Let me say to our partners, I think of you all the time. It's really um, close to Jeannie and I's heart, uh, the people that have joined with us to help us build VTN and keep it healthy, ministering to people all over Arkansas and now through uh, Roku and Livestream all over the world. Every day uh, through Roku, you can watch VTN Roku. I told somebody the other day, they said, can I get VTN on Roku? Yes, just go to the channel store and put in VTN or live stream, your phone, your iPad, your computer, whatever. And there are about all 50 states watching on Roku and about 14 countries watching live stream. Now, you as a partner with VTN, you make that happen. And, and Jeannie and I were thinking about you the other day, and here's what came to me. This scripture came to me, and uh, I want to read it to you today. In Mark chapter 11, when they came to Jerusalem and on the Beth page, Bethany, at the Mount of the Olives, they sent forth two of his disciples, Jesus did, and he said, this is Jesus talking, go your way into the village over against you, and as soon as you enter into it, you will find a colt tied, whereupon never a man sat, loose him, and bring him. And if any man say unto you, why do you do this? Where are you going with that colt? Why, why are you taking that colt? He said, you say to him, the Lord hath need of him. And straightway he will send him hither or bring him back. And this is what came to me. Jesus uh, said to the disciples, if anybody asks you why you're taking the colt, say the Lord hath need of him. And immediately it came to me what God told me in the beginning when we built VTN. I said, God, I can't do this by myself. He said, you won't have to. I will raise up people to help you do this. And that's what he's done. And you're one of those people. I need you just like Jesus needed that colt. And they told, he told his disciples, tell anybody that asks you, the Lord hath need of him. Well, I'm not the Lord, but I have need of you as a partner. So thank you, partner. You're such a blessing to VTN. Now, if I'm speaking to you and you have never become a partner, you don't know what a partner is, uh, then you can call the number uh, that's on the screen. Uh, you can uh, text to give. Here's the text number, area 501-214-4462. You can text your gift, say, hey, Pastor Cole, well, I'm one of those partners. I want to be a partner. Here's my, uh, my gift. That's 501-214-4462. Or you can go online, vtntv.com, and you can click on a give. Click on give, and that'll tell you how to uh, partner with VTN. You can do it monthly. You can do it a one-time gift, but you, you can also do it by mail. Mail your gift, and many of our viewers still do that, to VTN Box 26207. That's P.O. Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221. So click to give on the website, uh, vtntv.com, or you can text to give. But let us hear from you. You're precious to us, and we need you. Now, let's get into the message today. We're continuing with the power of the tongue. Uh, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And yesterday, uh, we... Uh, reviewed the scriptures where God established a word system, created man in his own image and likeness, made him a speaking spirit, and uh, told him, to, and this is what we're going to uh, wind up with today. This is probably the main revelation 
of the power of the tongue. And if you get this, it'll totally change uh, your life. Uh, you must speak God's word to your individual circumstances. You must put the word of God on the inside of you. And the Bible says that God's word is medicine or health to your flesh. Uh, that's in uh, uh, Proverbs 4, 20 through 22. It also says in Psalm 103, uh, excuse me, 107, 20, God sent forth his word and healed us. So you can be healed by the word of God, just like you can by taking medicine. God talks about his word as being like a medicine. Uh, go with me over to Proverbs chapter four. You say, Pastor Cole, I'd like to know where that is in the Bible. You might want to share with somebody else and you might need to remind yourself. Uh, let's go to Proverbs uh, 4 and let's look at verse 20. Proverbs 4, 20. My son, incline, uh, excuse me, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart for they are life unto them that find them and health or the marginal reference says medicine to all their flesh to all your flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence for out of it uh, are perceived the issues of life. So the word of God is medicine. It's, it's healing to your body. <laughs> Meditate on that and get the revelation. Charles Capps put out a book years ago. Charles and I started in the ministry about the same time. And he put out a book and he called it Gospel Capsules. Gospel G-O-S-P-I-L-L, -L, gospel, like a pill you take. Gospel capsules, cap, his name, C-A-P-P, -P, sules, capsules. And he was trying to get people to get a revelation. If you will, and he, in that little booklet, oh, it's probably about the size of this phone. In that little booklet, you could carry it in your purse. I think there were millions of copies sold all over the world. You could, you could take that anytime, keep it in your shirt pocket, in your purse, ladies, and you could take that out anytime. He said, if you feel sick or you have symptoms, take this, <clears throat> these gospel capsules three times a day. <laughs> Rather than taking medicine three times a day, take the word, take the gospel, the gospel, the gospel capsules at three times a day. And based on this scripture, it's where, where did we finish reading Proverbs chapter four? It says the word of God is life to those that find them and health or medicine to their flesh. Now I know in the early days of my salvation, when I got saved and I've been saved 50, uh, let's say 50 years now, I would take the word of God. I would read that. And I would take it literally. And I would take this Bible and I'd put it on my head. I'd put it on my chest. I'd put it any part of my body where it needed healing. I'd lay it on my stomach. I mean, and, and the Lord finally got through. To, he he kind of put up with me. You know, he does. He puts up with us when we're babies. And <laughs> uh, the margin of error is wide. He gives us a lot of slack. But then the older we get in the Lord, he expects us to, you know, get smarter. And he said, son, I honored that for a while. But he said, that's not what I'm talking about. He said, I'm not talking about taking a physical Bible and putting it on your head. If you have a headache or on your stomach, if you have a stomach. Ache. I'm talking about getting the word of God on the inside of you. And the only way you can do that is to speak it in there. Remember, we're talking about the power of the tongue. You speak the word of God on the inside and it becomes a revelation to you. You mix it with faith because the word of God carries its own power. It's spiritual. It's powerful. And you get it on the inside of you. And then when the revelation takes place, boom, you speak it out of your mouth. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. I'm blessed giving, coming in, going out. I'm blessed uh, to give and to receive. <clears throat> and so you begin to operate in this principle. God sent his word and healed us. Look at uh, Psalm 107, uh, 20, Psalm 107, 20. And this is another one that I used to 
confess um, all the time. And I would, I would write it down. I would confess it. Psalm 107, and let's look at verse 20. Psalm 107, 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Now, notice what he sent. He sent his word. Now, I know Jesus healed. He demonstrated God's will. I know angels are sent. I know the Holy Spirit is sent. But this says he sent his word. He sent his word. His word, God and his word are the same. Uh, go back with me to Mark's gospel. And let's look at, let's see. Let's, I think it's, I didn't have this in my notes, but uh, I think it's in Mark chapter 8. Eight. Anyway, it's when the uh, I know it's Matthew eight, when when the centurion came to Jesus. Do you remember that the centurion, a Roman soldier, and he came to Jesus, and he said, uh, "I'm a man under authority. I recognize authority." And here it is, uh, Matthew eight, verse. Um, Eight, well, no, verse six, Matthew eight, six. Listen to this. And a centurion came to him and said, Lord, my servant lies at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. Now, remember, we're talking about uh, the scripture in Psalm 107, 20. He sent his word and healed us. Well, Jesus was the word made flesh. But Jesus was sent to heal people. But I, I want you to get the revelation of the word was sent. And the, Jesus told the centurion, he said, if you'll come and heal my servant. And Jesus said, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. Now, what did that mean? This man was a Roman centurion, a Roman soldier. He was saying, in essence, the Romans don't have a covenant with God uh, like your people do. And, you know, we don't deserve anything that God has for us. We're an ungodly people. So he said, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. But if you will just speak the word, hmm, speak the word only, my servant will be healed. Wow. Jesus later said in verse 10, so great faith, I have never found so great faith in all of Israel. Why? This, this centurion uh, said, you don't need to come to my house. We're not covenant people. And, and if you just speak the word, because listen to this, I am a man under authority. I have soldiers under me. I say to this man, go and he goes to to this one come and he comes to my servant do this and he doeth it when Jesus heard that he marveled and said to him I have not seen so great faith in all of Israel and I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven but the children of the kingdom shall be cast out of darkness they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth and Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as you have believed, be it done unto you. That's why I said I've not seen so much faith. You don't want me to come lay hands on him. You just want me to speak the word. Wow. And as you have believed, so it be done unto you. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. Now, this is a powerful illustration of the power of the tongue, the word of God. This centurion said, you don't need to come to my house. Just speak the word only and my servant will be healed. And Jesus said, your faith, your faith is what produced this. Now listen to the next verse. And when Jesus was come to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid in sick of a fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her and she arose and ministered unto them. Jesus laid hands on Peter's mother-in-law 
and she was healed. The centurion said, you don't even need to come to my house. Just speak the word only. Now that's, that's a level of faith that Jesus said he had never seen before in all of Israel. The word of God was given to us, Psalm uh, 107.20. It says, and he sent the word and healed them. And that scripture is a perfect example of how God sent his word and healed the centurion's servant. So if you develop this on the inside of you, just speak the word. Just speak the word of God. Of course, you understand you have to have faith in that word. You have to know that God sent his word to heal you. And Proverbs 4, 20 through 22, you know that that word is medicine, health, healing to your flesh. You can, you can do both. You can, you can mix the medicine and, and faith together, but you'll get to the point where you won't need the medicine and you just release your faith. Your faith will be so strong and, and, and faith in God's word will be so strong that you'll learn to speak the word. And let me tell you what will happen. You, you'll begin to feel uh, symptoms of sickness and disease, disease coming on you. And the first thing out of your mouth will not be, oh, I feel like I'm taking a cold. No, that won't, that won't come out anymore. What will come out is, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. I am not taking this headache. Do you get it? Taking, so I feel like I'm taking a cold. Why are you taking it? Don't take it. Don't take the headache. Rebuke it. Command it to leave you. Sickness and disease. Jesus died for you to be healed. So you stand on that word. Now, you might miss it the first few times out. You might fail. You might get sick. You might have financial problems, but you keep saying it. I'm not talking about being in denial. Uh, I'm talking about not letting the circumstances override your faith. Do what you have to do in the natural, but you keep speaking the word. You keep saying the word, keep saying the word. And you can do this over your children. Uh, I remember, <laughs> my goodness, this is so funny. But back when Jeannie and Ronnie and I traveled all the time and we had a little 72 Dodge van, we drove from coast to coast and border to border. And we were down in South Louisiana in a church in Lafayette, Louisiana. And in those days, our little uh, van uh, kind of served as a prayer cabin, a, a prayer room for us too, especially if we were uh, in a situation where there was no peace and quiet in a home. We stayed in a lot of homes in those days or in a hotel or whatever. And I remember this Sunday morning. No, I take that back. It wasn't Lafayette. It was Lake Charles, Lake Charles, Louisiana. We were ministering in a church down there, and Ronnie and Jeannie were inside in the church building, a little shopping center church. And they were inside setting up the records and the PA system and all that. The Sunday morning, and I needed some time to pray, some additional time. And we had parked our van. We pulled a trailer, all the equipment. And then I had parked the van in the alley behind the shopping center, behind where the church was. And the shopping center bay that the church was in, it had a back door that came out into the alley like all the other bays did. And I was out there praying. And in this van, I had kind of customized it <laughs> as much as I could. You, you couldn't buy a customized van in those days. You had to take them to a custom shop and let them do it. But I had put some uh, couches in there that I had made and because uh, it wasn't big enough for anything else. And I was sitting there and I was reading the Bible and I was praying. And all of a sudden, the door opened and out came this man and he had a little boy in his arms, bottom side up, and he came out into the alley. And this little boy was acting up in church and the father was taking him out of the congregation to, to discipline him. But he was doing more than just spanking his bottom because he came out and he went whop, whop, whop. And I was sitting there watching this and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, what's he doing? And after he gave him three slaps, he said, you are an obedient son. You have the wisdom of God. You are obedient. You are minding. You are not rebellious. And he just began to confess the word over this boy. I thought, wow, 
what an illustration of the power of the tongue, the Word of God. He not only applied the stimulus to his hind end to awaken his consciousness, but he applied the Word of God. And I got so tickled to that. And so the man opened the door, he went back inside, and I kept reading. I, well, it wasn't three minutes later. The door opened again. Out came this same man with this same little boy with his bottom up, and he went after him again, and he started swatting him. And every time he would say, you are obedient, son. Uh, you love the Lord. You're not uh, rebellious. You're disciplined, blah, blah, blah. And he did that a couple of three times just while I was sitting there. Now, what was he, what was he doing besides spanking the boy and getting his attention that something was wrong? He was confessing the word over him. And, you know, you parents, of course, I know the world, the culture today, you know, they don't, a lot of people don't spank and discipline their children anymore because, you know, the, the culture today thinks that's child abuse, but that's not what God thinks. God thinks that it's disciplining and you have the right as a parent to do that. That's not child abuse <clears throat> and you discipline your child. But what you're lacking in many cases is explaining to the child why they're getting this spanking and then reading them what the Word of God says. And that's what he was doing. He was spanking the child, but he was letting him know, you're an obedient son, you're not rebellious, blah, blah, blah. He was sowing the Word into that child. He was speaking the Word of God over his son. Now, of course, we were only there two or three days and we left, so I don't know what happened. But I guarantee you that boy learned the lesson. If that father continued that, you know, if fathers would do that uh, on a regular basis, not only love the child, discipline the child, speak the word to the child, we wouldn't, we, we wouldn't be having the, the problems that we have in the family. Uh, the gangs wouldn't be taking over uh, the place of the parents and the family. We wouldn't have the shootings. We wouldn't have the killings. We wouldn't have any of that stuff. Fathers have to take their place, and you have to speak the word over your children sons and daughters. Through our confession, we call for and possess whatever God has given to us. Let me say that again. Through our confession, we call for and possess whatever God has promised. Healing, deliverance, prosperity. We possess what He has already given to us. Isaiah 53, 5, 6, he says, my words are higher than your words. You have to realize that God's words are full of power, creative power. And 1 Peter 2, 24, by his stripes, you were healed. Now, uh, we're going to run out of time here in just a minute for today. But um, tomorrow, I want to deal with the, how would I say, the heart, the revelation of the power of the tongue. And here's what it is. Calling things that are not yet seen as though they were. That's what you're doing when you're speaking the word, exercising your authority, the power of God's word, the power of the spoken word. You are calling for things that are not yet seen as though they were. That's tomorrow's topic. Right now, I want to show you how you can get your copy of the word system. Watch this and I'll be right back. When God spoke, creation came into being. He created man in his own image, so man could operate the word system the same way he did. God has established a system of communication that uses words to create. God is looking today for a bold people who will learn to use their authority in the earth and speak his word. A people who will speak words of faith and power to accomplish his purpose in their lives and in the world. Pastor Caldwell's book, The Word System, dives into how our faith and speaking God's Word can change any situation. To order your copy of The Word System, call toll-free at 1-888-641-3375 or log on to vtntv.com. The book is just $8 plus shipping and handling. The words you speak influence every area of your life. Speak creatively today and use the word system that God has given you. I want to say thank you for ordering your copy of the word system. 
Now, the main purpose for getting this book in your hands is to empower you to take authority over your situation in the world, whatever it may be, wherever the assault comes from, whether it comes from Satan directly, uh, whether it comes from sickness, disease, poverty, whether it comes from government, whether it comes from policy, uh, you don't have to be manipulated by and controlled. You know, I, I think most Americans know this. I hope they do. But you hear a lot about people in polls saying, I think the country's going in the wrong direction. And uh, it, it, it is. What direction is it going in? The way of socialism because that's what the people in power, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a shocking thing to realize that a lot of people in American politics, politicians, they actually want America to become a socialist nation. And because I ask the questions all the time, why do these people keep putting the same people back in office? They know what they're going to do. That's the whole point. They know what they're going to do, and that's why they keep putting them back in office, because they believe in socialism. They believe in the government controlling everything. And, you know, as the country continues to deteriorate in going the way of socialism and eventually communism, what are you supposed to be doing? As religious rights are threatened, as liberties are being taken away or freedoms are being taken away, what are you going to do? That's where this comes in. You begin to think and you begin to say, because the Bible says if you pray for those in authority, you will live a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. In other words, all of the corruption, the chaos and whatever is not going to affect you. It will affect the world, but it won't affect you. God will supernaturally take care of you because you have framed your world with the word of God, just like God did. Hallelujah. And you're going to find out tomorrow more of how to do that. So thanks for joining us for today. And remember, Jesus is Lord of Arkansas and wherever in the world you're watching too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas 72221 or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com. Remember to follow VTN on Facebook at VTN Your Arkansas Christian Connection and follow Happy Caldwell on Twitter at happy underscore Caldwell. VTN is on Roku. Search VTN in the channel store and add us to your lineup. Today's episode is available to watch on demand at vtntv.com and click watch. You can also watch VTN via live stream at vtntv.com.